I'm with Jack Warner, the president of CONCACAF. Firstly, Jack, uh, thank you very much for your time. Also, I noticed that you took over the presidency of CONCACAF in 1990, and then in 1991 we had the Gold Cup. Was it something that you inherited, or was it something that uh, you developed in a short space of time? Well, let me say, first of all, I didn't take over CONCACAF. I fought for it, fought to get elected, and we then won it because it was tough. Very difficult after 32 years with one Mexican as president. And when we got CONCACAF uh, in 1990, we got a, a table, eight chairs, and 40,000 US dollars. That's, that's all. It. That's all. Oof. And uh, uh, I looked around to see what can be done, how can we move this confederation from the dull drums, so to speak, to some position of pinnacle. And uh, then I went to Chuck Blazer, who was my friend from since 86, and he was the automatic choice. Uh, based on his competence, his expertise, and so on. And overnight, we were able to bring several competitions, of which the Gold Cup is our premier competition. How has it developed uh, since 1991 to now, in, in 2007? Well, in the early years, because it was a new competition, uh, in the 1991 and others, we had to find and look for other countries to come in and take part. We brought in, at one point in time, Brazil, then Colombia, South Africa, uh, South Korea and these countries, they came in and they came in to help to give us a kind of international uh, legitimacy and respect as it were. And over the years, we, we, we have been able to develop our teams to a level that is acceptable, not worldwide. And beginning from this year, we are of the opinion, and believe you me, successfully so too, that we can stand on our own. And therefore, all 12 teams this year are totally CONCACAF teams. There are no foreign teams anymore. I noticed that uh, at the press conference when you opened the tournament, you said, uh, and if I have my way, it will be just CONCACAF from now on in. And I swear to you. In fact, I don't even saw the game against Cuba, with oh, Cuba, yeah. uh, 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 even Guadalupe, Haiti. There is not a single match that has been played so far that you can call it a bad match, a poor game. I have never enjoyed football as I did in the last three, four days. I was in Miami, I was in LA, I, I, was, I was at Giant Stadium, and all these games I've seen are top-class games. In fact, I tell you, the Cuban team that played against Mexico came within a whisker of winning. And if Cuba could have done that um, from the Caribbean, there is a lot of hope for the future. And I am convinced that we do not need to have any more foreign teams um, in our competitions again. For yourself personally, how proud do you feel, uh, as you mentioned, you inherited uh, you know, eight chairs, a, a desk and some money, to where CONCACAF is now and where the Gold Cup is now? No, I'm extremely proud. But I want to say quickly that this pride is based on the collective efforts of all of us. Not only the president, I am merely, of course, the captain of the ship, but the guys who, who work on the ship, the team, the staff, and particularly the staff at the New York office, head by head by Chuck. They are the ones who really carry this forward. And we have a kind of renaissance, as it were, a kind of enlightenment now in football, in CONCACAF. And I tell you, there's no turning back, none whatsoever. For the future of the Gold Cup, are you looking to possibly expand the tournament from 12 teams to some more or, or look to do something different as, as it goes on? Ideally, we should go to 16 teams. But I would like to say that is down the road because we should um, at least, uh, I always make a point, we should creep before we walk. Mm. And we should not allow our success, our immediate success, to tend, of course, to push us too quickly. And mm. for me, ultimately 16 teams. But right now, I'm satisfied with the 12 that we have. I've also heard rumours of uh, possibly a, a CONCACAF Champions League at a club level. Is that, uh, is that correct? That's perfect. Uh, that's correct. It was passed at the last uh, Congress. It was passed at the last CONCACAF Executive Committee with wow. 24 teams. It's an event whose time is due. And the system we have in play is not only innovative, but it's one that is satisfactory to all the countries, all the participants. And I believe that that it would be as popular as, if not, more than the Gold Cup, because it encompasses um, mm. the clubs now, it, uh, and the clubs sometimes have even stronger affiliation than some of the countries. The passion is always there, the sponsorship is always there, and I, um, I, I, I really, really believe that uh, more importantly, the fact that we have the FIFA Club World Championship every year now mm. would make that event even more important than it is at the moment. W would the winner of the uh, Champions League participate in the uh, Club World Cup yes, in Japan? Yes, most definitely. That would be the case, and that would be so um, beginning from 2009. Before you, you leave the presidency or before you leave CONCACAF, what would be your ultimate dream to where to see it in the future? You know, that's a fantastic question. Oh, thank you. The day, <laughs> the, day, the day 
and I mean very soon, I will want to see a CONCACAF country in a World Cup final. If we may not win it, Jesus Christ, is our time. We have to mm -hmm. be in a World Cup final. And if you ask me, and I would say, I say this, it would seem over the years that Mexico is the country that is best geared to do this for us. And that is why always I'm concerned about the fortunes of football in Mexico. Because when Mexico football is on the rise, CONCACAF is on the rise. The U.S. also is coming, to, is coming along, and so is Costa Rica. But we have to have a country in a World Cup final. That's the first thing. Secondly, our women's football must be expanded more in the CONCACAF. Not enough countries are playing women's football, and that must not exist in the next two to four years. And thirdly, and most importantly, our youth programs must be more effective. We can't expect to succeed in football unless we build from the ground mm. up, and therefore our youth programs must be effective. It must not be cosmetic. It must be truly effective programs where we must put some money, have a vision, know where we want to go, and how we want to get there. And if those things are achieved, the best will fall into place, like refereeing, coaching, sports medicine, and so on. Well, Jack, what was the, the basic premise behind uh, the Gold Cup itself? Well, let me see. Prior to the Gold Cup, you had World Cup qualifying, and that was a four-year event. But the Gold Cup came in for every, every two years, such so as stimulate activity among the countries, to keep them prepared on an ongoing basis, and to help them to lift the level of football. So we had deliberately made the Gold Cup a two-year event, as it had been from inception and as it is now, contrary to what happens in other confederations, of course. Also, it must, uh, must help when uh, the Caribbean Cup start and also the ONCAP that, Cup as correct. well, because then you've got the teams playing quite regularly. Based on that, therefore, our regional associations now also have to qualify. So you had UNCAF versus Central America. Mm. They now had to qualify against teams for every two years. The Caribbean, through the Caribbean Football Union, the same. And therefore, you had this cycle on an ongoing basis. And I'm saying that this helped to, st to stimulate activity among the countries and to bring them up to an acceptable level. Now, you mentioned uh, that your ultimate dream would be to see a team from CONCACAF in the World Cup final. How much do you think that the Gold Cup will help uh, the teams from CONCACAF make that journey? Because we have this two-year cycle, which means that they have to be prepared on an ongoing basis, which means they have to sustain their development and their programs. It means that that will help to keep them fit and ready. And I should possibly make the point that this explains the Cubas of this world, the St. Kitts and so on, because the Gold Cup is a two-year affair, not a four-year affair. All right, well, thank you very much, well, Jack. Thank, thank you very much for your time. I'll no let you. How many emails did you say you had to answer? Still 3,000. 3,000? Yeah. And how, what, that's in a day? You'd get 3,000 in a day? More or less. <laughs> Sometimes more. All right, well, I'd better let you go do some work. When we came back, it is more from Inside the Gold Cup from 2007.